Welcome back to the SSL Family Dad channel. Today we're out in the shop and we are gonna talk all about lithium iron phosphate batteries. We're gonna talk about wiring in parallel, series, and some of the basics about batteries, battery banks, and how to set things up. I'm also gonna show you a cool new battery that you can actually Bluetooth connect to and check out all the specs. You can see uh, how well it's charging, how well it's discharging, how much battery capacity is left in the battery, all that stuff, right from your phone. It's pretty cool. So let's dig in. We're gonna take a look at a couple of these Power Urus batteries. They're 12 volt lithium iron phosphate batteries. We're gonna see how we can wire these in different ways to get different results. So here we have two batteries. These are lithium iron phosphate batteries. These are very different than your, uh, your old lead acid batteries. They have a about 10 times the life, the capacity, the number of cycles that you can run through these over a standard car battery, lead acid battery, or even your marine deep cycle batteries. These are, they last much, much longer. They also have a bunch of electronics built in that helps to protect the batteries. These are not just a simple storage device, but you can still wire these kinds of batteries in very similar ways as you always could with lead acid batteries with a few little changes that I think people are still holding on to. This is from a company called Power URS. These are actually really, they're not as expensive as they used to be at all. So let's look at, let's talk about a couple different ways that you can wire these batteries to get different results. So you'll see I have this battery flipped on its side. That's one of the differences with these lithium iron phosphate batteries is that you can operate these on their side. Uh, standing up or, or you know, in a normal configuration. They do recommend that you do not operate them upside down. However, you actually probably could. Uh, it just might not be as good for the battery over time. So number one, if you're just looking to do a simple solar setup or wind setup and you wanna maybe have a, an off-grid shop or cabin, you can get one of these batteries. You can throw it in your in your system with a very cheap, you know, in, inexpensive charge controller. And all you need to do is hook up a solar panel or a wind generator to a charge controller and then hook that to your battery. Then the battery will get hooked to an inverter, 12 volt inverter, and you're good to go. You've got a good capacity here. This particular battery is a 100 amp hour battery at 12.8 volts. So what does that mean? All right, a couple basics when we're talking about electricity. This will help us to uh, measure some outputs and things as we go here. Your watts equals the amps times the volts. This formula can be manipulated in a few different ways to give us a bunch of valuable information. So our battery is 100 amp hours. This means it can pull 100 amps for one hour. You could also say that you could pull 200 amps for 30 minutes for a half of that, of that amount of time. What normally we have is a device Let's say we have a light bulb that is a 100 watt light bulb and we want to run this light bulb. We want to know how long can our 100 amp hour battery, how long can this run this light bulb? So what we need to figure out is this using this formula, how many amps are we pulling at 12 volts? That's our battery power. So if we have one, 100 watts, that's uh, plugged into a formula here, equals, we don't know the number of amps, that's what we're trying to solve for, but we do know the number of volts, which is 12, 12 volts. So if we solve for A, we divide by 12, we divide by 12. What do we end up with? Around eight amps. Now we know how much we're pulling, so for every hour we run this light bulb, we're actually gonna be pulling eight amps per hour. So how many hours can we run that in? Well. We've got 100 amp hours, and we're running, we're pulling eight amps per hour. So we divide that into our 100, which is gonna end up giving us a little over, it's about 12.5 hours. That's how long we could run a 100 watt light bulb from this battery with 100 amp hours. That's, these are all very rough estimates, okay? But this is how we figure that out. This is the only formula that you need in order to solve all of those equations and problems and then a few basic, uh, basic bits of math. Now there are a few things you wanna consider here. If you're running things uh, through an inverter connected to your battery, then there's gonna be a loss there. You're gonna lose, uh, I don't know, let's say plus or minus uh, five to 10% of your overall capacity. There's some efficiency loss there when you're running things through an inverter. So you're converting your DC power from your battery to AC power, and then you're running your 100 watt light bulb. Now let's say 
we, we need to run our 100 watt light bulb for longer than 12.5 hours, what can we do? Let's say we wanna double our capacity. What you're gonna do is you're gonna tie two batteries together in parallel. Is you're gonna connect your positive to your positive and your negative to your negative. Flip this all the way around. Now you have positive to positive, negative to negative. So all we need to do now is hook up our, our load, our source, our 100 watt light bulb. If it was a, a DC so, uh, load, then we would just hook it right up to the battery. If we want an alternating current, like your house current, then you're gonna have to hook up an inverter. So now instead of having your 100 amp hours, now you have 200 amp hours. You've doubled your capacity, your runtime on this. You've also doubled your current that you can draw. So one of these batteries, the max current you can draw from one battery is 100 amps. Now we can actually draw 200 amps. So you've, you've doubled the amount of power that you can pull. For those of you guys who have set these up with old lead acid or deep cycle marine batteries in the past, what you normally would do to hook up your load to a battery bank like this, a parallel battery bank, is everyone will tell you you should pull off of this negative terminal, hook up your, your lead here and go to your inverter, and then you should hook up this back positive terminal from back here and go to your, your inverter. So you have your lead coming off of this one and your lead coming off of this one. That's what they would tell you. With these batteries, I would say that is completely unnecessary. Just pull off of one, the, the last battery in your battery bank. So if you had, you know, 10 of these things lined up in parallel, you could easily just pull off the last terminal in your battery. And the reason I say that is because these are self-leveling batteries. They have what's called a battery maintenance system. BMS or battery maintenance system, especially in these, the good ones, the, the Power URS, the Power URS batteries, they have a whole bunch of electronics in there that's going to automatically balance those batteries out. It's automatically going to prevent overcharging, undercharging, uh, over discharging. So if you short circuit a battery, you actually touch two terminals together, you accidentally, you know, uh, reverse polarity, all that stuff is protected. The, the, the electronics in there are going to manage all that stuff. Now that wasn't the case with lead acid batteries. It is the case with these batteries. Now, if you want to do it differently, that's totally fine. My opinion, you don't need to do that. Another common configuration with batteries in solar setups and wind setups is using a uh, batteries in series instead of parallel. In a series configuration, you're gonna hook the positive on one of your batteries up to the negative on another one. So your inverter is gonna actually get hooked up to these uh, two wires right here. One comes off this battery, one comes off this battery. So when you do that at this, at these two terminals, you're gonna end up with, instead of 12 volts, you're gonna end up with 24 volts. So this converts your 12 volt batteries, the two 12 volt batteries into one 24 volt system. And if you had three batteries or four batteries, you can up your voltage. Many common solar and wind systems are gonna use a combination of four 12 volt batteries to create a 48 volt system. Now that does a couple things for you. Remember, we're raising our voltage. So now we have 48 volts here, but we still have the same power coming out of the battery. So that means our amperage is gonna get lower. Lower current or lower amps allows you to use smaller wires. It allows the uh, voltage to travel a little bit further distance as well. Um, and it runs a little bit more efficiently, many would say, in, in uh, some of your systems. But of course, for that kind of setup, you would need to have a 48 volt inverter and 48 volt solar setup and 48 volt you know wind setup, whatever you're using. Everything has to be 48 volts, which is a little more, more uncommon. So let's hook our batteries back up into a parallel configuration. And also, let's add a load. A couple things going on here. We have back in our parallel configuration, so we're back at a 12 volt system. I have these two leads here. Again, never mind the wire colors, they're actually backwards. Uh, I have a positive terminal here that is running to a, a load. I'll show you in a minute. And negative uh, wire here running to a load. And then I actually have a, a charger put on this battery. So the way this is working, these this load is pulling from this battery, but it's pulling from the entire bank. So we have double capacity, double our amps. This right here is charging, and this is charging not just this battery, it's charging the entire battery bank as a whole. So what I'm gonna be using these particular batteries for here on the homestead is this is going to be just, these are extra as far as uh, uh, extra capacity when I'm out and about, uh, when I really wanna do some long-term uh, tooling or shop work or something like that out in the field. I can expand the capacity 
of one of my power stations. Uh, the Blue Eddy power station right now is hooked up to this, and so that is where my load goes. These wires, they go over to the charging port on this, and so this is staying charged. But let me show you the coolest thing about these batteries. You can actually connect to these individually and check the specs, see how well they're working, check temperatures, check charge, check all that stuff. So let me show you. All right, so in the app itself, let's get connected via Bluetooth directly to one of our batteries. Gives you an opportunity to name it here. We're not going to do that. But this will actually tell us the percent, the charge percentage. So it's at about 30% charge right now. It'll tell you the average voltage that we've had pull from this. It'll tell you the uh, number of cycle times we have down in the center there. We've actually got one cycle on this or less than one cycle. So these batteries are, are listed as, you know, 5,000 cycle battery. So we've got quite a bit of life still left in these. And it'll tell you the, the health of the individual cells, the temperature of the battery at overall. So you can monitor your battery performance right from here. Even if it's in a battery bank, you can connect to each individual battery and monitor them, uh, see how they're working, which is pretty cool. This is something you obviously could never do with an older battery style, lead acid batteries, even the AGM batteries. This is one of the advantages of having the BMS electronics built right in. Hopefully you guys enjoyed uh, a quick battery update class, whatever you want to call it. Uh, if there was anything that you don't agree with, I'd love to hear. I'd love to hear from you guys. There's lots of different theories and, uh, and things out there, uh, ways to compute things. And so I'd love to hear from you guys what you think about uh, uh, what you've learned or heard here today. If you have any questions, of course, throw those things down below. You can check out those uh, Power Eurus batteries. I'll put a link in the description to their site. They have some pretty cool new technology, especially with the heated batteries. They automatically will warm up, allow the batteries to charge if they're too cold which is very useful up here in places like Michigan. Uh, so let me know what you guys think. Don't forget to hit thumbs up on today's video. Subscribe if it's your first time here. Love to have you tag along for all the, the fun experiments and things we do around the homestead here. And as always, guys, thanks for watching. Have a good one.